cost accounting 15b fixed overhead variances and variance journal entries this is Ken Boyd the owner of St. Louis test preparation here's our Facebook page we are out on Facebook here's also our email address and our phone number I'm going to jump over to Excel and what we talked about on the last video was uh, variable overhead analysis this has to do with fixed overhead analysis and again let's talk about an example the variable overhead analysis example was repair costs on a machine let's say we have fixed overhead and our example is the uh, salary and benefit cost for a security guard that guards our plant it's a fixed cost we pay them a fixed amount every year and it's overhead because we can't directly apply the cost to production so again we set up three columns what's consistent with what we saw in the variance and now on the variable overhead was we have actual on the far left and we have fixed overhead applied which is closer to dealing with standards or budgeted on the right actual on the left budgeted on the right now let's look at the specific headings actual fixed overhead incurred is the check that we wrote in this example it's a million two hundred and fifty seven thousand in the middle we have fixed overhead budgeted what do we expect to spend 1.2 million and then we have fixed overhead applied and if you remember from the variable discussion we apply standard hours times actual units I'm gonna copy this over because it's the same data that we had on the variable the flexible budgeting assumption is, is that we apply standards to actual production so when we talk about fixed overhead applied we're applying standards to actual production so in this example let's look at some of the uh, let's now dive into the detail fixed overhead applied is standard hours times some predetermined overhead rate and we're going to get to that in just a minute here's the question the student was given Manning football produces footballs and uses a standard costing system fixed budgeted overhead was 1.2 million fixed budgeted overhead there's what we expect to spend 1.2 million in the middle so that's given actual fixed overhead in red was 1 million 257 that is the check that we wrote actual fixed overhead on the far left to get the right hand column fixed overhead applied we need to get some more data they projected 150,000 footballs would be produced during the year in brown so that is our expected activity in units 150,000 footballs they actually produce 160,000 footballs that is actual production so you see in fixed overhead applied when we have standard hours allowed we're multiplying the standard hours per unit we figure out here times the actual units which are 160,000 so the last piece of this puzzle is we need to figure out our predetermined overhead rate which is the budgeted fixed overhead 1.2 million that we saw in the middle column here 1.2 million and we're going to divide that by the expected activity in units the 150,000 and we get eight dollars and then we're going to multiply the eight dollars the standard per unit I should say cost and not hours change that to cost the standard cost of eight that we just figured out is our predetermined overhead rate and we're going to multiply that by actual units which is 160,000 and when we do that we get a million two hundred eighty thousand so when we look at our variances remember reading left to right if you spend more reading right to left I should say if you're spending more reading right to left it's unfavorable 
if you're spending less moving right to left from standards to actual. If you're spending less moving right to left, that's favorable. Let's see an example. Fixed overhead applied was 1,280,000. Fixed overhead budgeted in the middle in blue was 1.2 million. So that is a favorable volume variance. It's a negative number of 80,000. Negative mean, meaning we spent less. When we spend less, that's favorable. When we compare the middle column to the check we actually wrote, we see that we wrote a check for 57,000 more than the budget. That is an unfavorable variance because we spent more, it's a positive number. Now one new piece of information is, how do I make a journal entry here? If we have an unfavorable variance where we spend more, that's going to be a debit. That expense is debited. If we have a favorable variance, we spent less, that's a credit. Expenses are reduced by crediting. So, positive number, debit, unfavorable, the expense is debited. Negative number, favorable, it's a credit, and we reduce expenses by crediting. I believe I have over here a journal entry. Here's an example journal entry to finish up here. It happens to be on the variable overhead tab, but it's the same point. We debit the work in process and control for the amount that we planned through our standard costing, the amount that we plan to transfer to work in process. That's a debit. The credit is to material control. That's the amount we actually transferred out of the material account, the labor account, the overhead account to production. So this could be in addition or labor or overhead. Whatever we transfer out into production, material, labor, or overhead, that's a credit. And you can see that we have a difference in the, between the two of 40,000 minus 36,000 or 4,000, which is made up of two variances. An unfavorable variance that's a debit a favorable variance that's a credit. And you can finally see how those are linked up here. We have an unfavorable 10,000. That's a debit. We have a favorable 6,000 variance. That's the credit. And the purpose of the entry, we always want to write a purpose below a journal entry, is to adjust work in process to the actual material removed from the material control account or the amount of move from the labor account removed from labor or the amount removed from overhead. And I say here, look, we're increasing expenses from 36 to 40,000 because actual cost 40 were more than the standard cost of 36 because our goal is to capture all the expenses and we need to make a journal entry for that. So this journal entry is true whether it's a fixed or variable overhead rate. That's the end of part 15b. For more videos that are not on the web, you can go to the web page and see a list of videos by topic and you can access either spreadsheet templates or the videos themselves that are not on the web. The YouTube channel Ken Boyd STL, you can email for a complete list of YouTube videos. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is the website. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.